Um, good morning all. I'm looking at the big picture in this presentation. We're looking at productivity and resilience at the national and sector level. Um, my fellow collaborators are Joel Gibbs, Dave Clark, Greg Lambert, Harry Clark and Matthew Newman in the production of this paper. So we understood that there'll be a range of um, definitions of resilience, so we chose to have our own definition here. Um, and we look at resilience as grassland's ability to cope with variability in climate, plant, animal management within New Zealand's livestock systems, a simple definition. What we did to start with was look at what have been the changes at the national level in both um, land area and stock numbers. We see um, there's been a 32% decline in sheep and beef grassland, about 4 million hectares. This has been paralleled by a 70% increase in dairy land um, and a 39% uh, increase in forest land area where there's a lot of discussion about. The dairy population has increased about 2.9 million uh, animals, 86%, with a decline in 30.5 million sheep or 53%, and a smaller decline in uh, beef animals of about 870,000 animals. The latest statistics see a continuing de decline, which came out, I saw some on the weekend, another 800,000 um, decline in sheep numbers. And over the last five years, the dairy numbers have um, declined about 70%. So have we reached peak dairy? So we went on to look at what is the total feed consumption nationally for our different sectors. We did this using our greenhouse gas inventory model where we monitor all animals in the country. Uh, using um, the Australian energy equations. If we look at the dairy sector from 1990 up to 2018, we've had about a 14 million tonne increase in total feed consumed by dairy animals, 125% increase. For sheep, we see a 10 million um, tonnes per annum dry matter decrease, uh, about a 30 to 40% decrease. And the beef numbers have been remained relatively static at about 10 million. I think the most interesting factors is that we've seen a, only just a, about a 4 million ton increase in the total feed consumption, feed consumption of animals. A recent paper um, done by Ames and Diamond using satellite technology showed that the total production, forage production in New Zealand is about 64 million tonnes. So we're in the right ball game here. We then went, went on to have a look at changes in productivity. We looked at the factors that we were, were most familiar with. We've seen a um, change in dairy milk solids of 4.5 kilograms per cow per year increase uh, over that nearly 30 year period. We see increases in um, animal carcass weight in sheep, lambs and heifers. Um, we've also seen a continuing 1.26% increase in the um, lambing percentage in ewes. Interestingly enough, there is a very strong linear relationship in all of these um, parameters from that 1990 to 2018 period. How long will this linear relationship last, we asked. We went on to have a look at a whole range of um, well-known um, well management practices. We've looked at irrigation. We see a threefold increase in the area of irrigated land since uh, 1990. And if we look at about a five and a half tonne increase in dry matter production due to irrigation, we believe that irrigation has added about 2.6 million tonnes of extra dry matter per year from the irrigated area expansion. Interestingly enough, we decided to look at what the effect of CO2 fertilisation might be. We hear all the negative elements of climate change, but is there a CO2 fertilisation effect? A paper by Newton et al. in 2014 suggested about a 0.2% increase in net herbage accumulation with every ppm increase in CO2. And based on these calculations and the fact that it occurs across the whole of the country, we believe it's about you know five, uh, 500,000 increase in total dry matter production due to um, CO2 fertilisation. Then we went on to look at uh, nitrogen, most familiar to most people, um, using a 10 kilogram per dry matter uh, increase um, response rate to nitrogen. We've seen that the volume of nitrogen has gone up from 52,000 to 
452,000. Um, and multiplying those two out, we reckon there's about an, another close to 4 million tonnes per hectare of dry matter produced um, due to nitrogen. We also wanted to look at the impact of phosphorus. Um, this proved a little bit more problematic, mainly because of data limitations and the history of response patterns with both maintenance and capital dressings having different effects. We used a, a couple of methods and um, using the mean of that, we believe there's about a, a response to about a half a million tonnes per annum due to the added phosphate application each year. Um, what's the impact of pasture renewal? We've talked about uh, new species here. We've only seen about a 40% increase in the area of, of cultivated um, and pasture new land over that period. Um, and from the limited trial data we could find, we saw that the, the change in response over that period has been uh, roughly about 0.12 million tonnes per year of increased dry matter due to pasture renewal. So it's not all positive. We need to take into account all the negative um, factors as well. So we looked at erosion and its potential impacts. Um, the figure we saw from um, estimated highly erodible land is about 621,000 hectares. And with um, some work by Rosa and Ross saying that we don't even get back to 100%, only 80% uh, pasture reduction after uh, 20 years on eroded land, we believe there's a loss of about 0.33 uh, million tonnes of dry matter due to erosion. But the big elements are essentially the impact of pests and weeds. Uh, luckily, there's been a couple of review papers done recently looking at the, uh, the potential dollar value losses of um, pests and diseases, and we've converted this to dry matter um, and believe that there's about a 2 million tonne loss to the dairy sector and about a 4.7 million tonne loss in the sheep and beef sector, giving us a total of about 6.7. And likewise, weeds, um, roughly 5.3 million tonnes loss due to weeds. And looking at forestry, which has had um, significant discussion recently, um, there's been about another 514,000 hectares gone into forestry over that period giving us a total loss due to increased forestry of about 4.2 million hectares of dry matter from um, pasture going to forestry. So we've tried to add up all these figures. We, we also put in there supplements, dairy and sheep supplements, and added all the figures up. And we, we believe that there was a positive uh, increase in dry matter over that period of about 11 million tonnes, 11 and a half million tonnes. When we chucked in the, the losses, but unfortunately we couldn't get any estimates or difference in the estimates of um, invertebrates at the start of the period, at the, the end of the period, but we believe there's probably been a, a loss of dry matter of about another 4 million tonnes, giving us about 7 million tonnes net total. And then if we compare that to the figure we had in table three or, or slide three, of about 3.8 million tonnes extra con consumption of pasture, we, we get a figure of about 3.6 million tonnes net um, net total and um, increase in dry matter over the whole of the country. So we, we're, we have some confidence that we're getting close to that because we haven't taken some uh, areas into account. So looking at, we're also asked to, to comment briefly on the sort of future of what we saw from what we've seen in all the um, literature. So we believe in the future we'll get, we're going to see similar management systems but more emphasis on operating within um, environmental limits. We're going to have irrigation and nitrogen still. We're going to have greater diversity within individual farm enterprises and we see that happening now. We're going to have greater matching of farm system to land suitability and we, we've heard about Northland getting warm. We need to actually match the farm systems. More efficient uh, supply and use of water. We see water storage becoming important. Greater vertical integration where there's going to be clearer price signals and, and provenance recognition as well. A greater requirement for custodianship of biodiversity. We can see that coming through quite strongly, both indigenous and introduced species. Um, and, and finally, stewardship of the land in return for a clear license to operate, we see as, as being a key feature. But also, just finally, we looked at what some of the future science needs are going to be in the future. Um, 
knowing the grassland species, including weeds and invertebrates um, that exist throughout the country would be useful. It's about 30 years since we did our last na national forage survey, and we believe it's time to set for another one. We need to gain a clearer understanding of the levels of pasture utilisation and the key factors affecting this. Everybody will say, look, we've done re research on this for years, but it's still not clear um, how we influence both of these. Understanding the full in, uh, impacts, negative and positive of climate change and improved knowledge of how we're going to adapt to these. Understanding the limits of um, production efficiency gained under grassland pastoral systems without importing more feeds. And you saw the strong linear response we had there, but at what stage are we going to get to a tipping point? Understanding the interactions of genetic and environmental impacts on forage productivity of the changing CO2 concentration is going to be important. And finally, understanding the continued animal genetics improvements and the impact on the consumption of forage. Thank you very much.